so Melissa just did her language arts lesson, and so we're going to talk about um, how she um, planned her lesson and what different strategies she used. Learners. Well, the first thing I did with planning my lesson was I made sure it was cross-curricular. So I made sure to connect the lesson to the science curriculum. So we used vocabulary they were familiar with from science. That way they weren't focused on figuring out what the sentence meant. They were really focused on the lesson. I also, in my planning, used the gradual release of responsibility where I modeled what we were going to do. And then we did it together. And then they could do it independently. So that's called I do, we do, you do. So I made sure I planned for that. Um, can, and can you tell us about some of the hand gestures that you were doing in the lesson and why you incorporated that? Um, the hand gestures is called, so when they stood up and they kind of acted out the subject and the predicate, so the noun and the verb, that's called total physical response and that's a strategy for kinesthetic learners as well as English language learners. So it helps them get active while they're learning vocabulary and it also helps English language learners remember the vocabulary. Do you have any questions right now from what you and saw why, at that point? Why did you use the thumb up style? Okay, so the thumbs up, thumbs down when I wanted them to see if they agreed with what was happening. That's kind of a check for understanding to make sure the class is understanding what's going on. And it's also to hold the students accountable and make sure everyone's participating in the lesson so that there's not just a couple of kids participating and then others are just sitting out. So, I'm sorry, I'm just going back a little bit. Okay. Can you use other subjects apart from science? Can you pick sentences from other subjects like history, geography? Yeah. Subjects? Yeah. So when I plan lessons, I just make sure I'm tying to any kind of curriculum that they're currently doing so that it's all universal and it all comes together. So you could use history sentences. You could use sentences from their creative art classes just so it ties to other curriculum. And you can also try to remember to connect back to lessons so you can connect the curriculum and then connect the scope and sequence of the subject you're teaching. So it doesn't have to just be language arts tied to science. You can tie it to anything you're teaching. When you were teaching, there was a style that you were using, that one of class, class. Why did you use that? So class, class, yes, yes, is a strategy from a program called Whole Brain Learning. And it just keeps the class engaged. And it's a way to get their attention back on you. So it's kind of like a classroom management strategy, but it's been proven to be effective with English language learners. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So do you think this thumbs up and down can be used with a bigger group? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a big group to the extent that you cannot even see some of them. So with a bigger group, it might even be better because it's difficult to check understanding for like 40 students. Sometimes you can't even get around and see all of their papers. So you could do that, but you could have them hold it up higher. Mm -hmm. So then if you, and sometimes we'll do like, yes, I agree, no, I disagree, or you could even do, I'm not sure, can you go over that again? Also, you, um, I saw you, telling the pupils to stand up, mm -hmm. and then you are doing something like subject. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? So that was the actions of the vocabulary. So that was for kinesthetic learners. Mm -hmm. So that is students that learn best by doing. Mm -hmm. So some students learn best by hearing. So this is for students that remember things when they act it out. So sometimes actions help those students remember it. And it's also a good strategy for all English language learners. So by using the actions for vocabulary words, you can hit the kinesthetic learning and the English language learners all at once. And then we do it for all vocabulary words. We do it for math vocabulary, science vocabulary, and we help the kids make the definitions, like how do you think you might act this word out? And then they'll help us come up with it, and so they can kind of take ownership over it, and then it makes it really fun for them. Okay. So apart from this action like this, we can use other, any mm, other Oh yeah, action. you can make up any action that... Driving maybe. Yeah, yeah, running. yeah. Uh -huh. And when you're making up those actions, are you, do you do that before the <coughs> lesson and come up with it on your own, or is it something you do in 
class time? Well, sometimes I have it in my mind what I would do in case they can't come up with something, but they really do enjoy, like, what action would you do? Like, for the action part, every kid could do their favorite action. Some kids could be driving, some could be running. Mm -hmm. So they can involve different actions mm -hmm. in the same, same class, in the mm -hmm. same, same lesson. Mm -hmm. Some can be running, mm -hmm. some can be driving, yeah. some can be jumping. Yeah, as long as it's an action that would demonstrate that it's a verb. Okay. And can we add from these groups A and B, can we do A, B, C, D? Mm -hmm. If you like. Yeah. A group, B group, C group, D group. Yeah, so within a group you could have A, B, C, D. The reason for that is you could say partner A, share with partner B, mm -hmm. and then you could say, okay, I'm going to call on A's, so be ready to share. That way they can think about it before they do it. Or you could say B's, tell me what A just shared with you, and that helps English language learners practice their listening skills and then their speaking skills. And you can do it with four, if A, B, C, D, but I would also sometimes incorporate the A and the B because think, pair, share is also a strategy for English language learners. So if you have a pair, you can say, okay, I'm going to ask a question and I want you to think about what the answer is. And then with your partner, share it with each other and then you can have them share out, which is an extremely effective strategy for English language learners because it gives them time to process the question you've asked and then they can use their speaking so it helps with their speaking to discuss it and then they're ready to share as opposed to just calling on a student that hasn't processed it or discussed it they'd have a harder time answering but with this one um, for example they can think quickly mm -hmm. they can speak quickly mm -hmm. what do you do with those who, can, who write slowly that write slowly? Mm -hmm. Well, in the think, pair, share, you're not always writing. Mm -hmm. It's mostly like a quick think and then a quick discussion and then they share out with the class. So that one should be in short and easy mm -hmm. to understand it. Yeah. It's just a way to help them process a question you're asking before they answer. So like if you know you're going to ask a question and call on a student, you might want to do a think, pair, share quickly before that just so they're prepared to answer the question. What would be the difference if I, as a teacher, I decide to write those sentences and mm -hmm. read them ready, all sentences written, then I just give them all the... To have them pre-written? I think that would be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a def different way to prepare the resources. I think this one of yours will help them to read, because that one she, she told us that they can write, they can copy something from the board mm -hmm. and, write, and write it down. That one will improve the skill of reading. So they read the sentence and then try to identify what they are being mm -hmm. asked. Writing it down also helped. I know we weren't teaching a lesson on capitals or punctuation, uh -huh. but it also helped because some of the students were capitalizing random words in the sentence. Mm -hmm. So I could s check that as I was walking through, and a couple of students, I told them, well, this isn't a proper noun or the beginning of a sentence, so don't capitalize it. Uh -huh. So I caught other errors by having them write it. So by doing that, we're giving them more skills mm -hmm. than just bringing the work ready. Well, and it makes it more independent. Yeah. Okay. And okay. also to create attention. <clears throat> it creates attention and working on what they are asking to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, you'll also notice the slow learners, mm -hmm. because they'll always mm -hmm. be the last one to work. So mm -hmm. they need more help. More help. Yeah, you more can time. identify them. So, so if you're working, also, we, this also will help you to to check out if your goal has been successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. That also. Yeah. Because you'll know how many of them in your class um, did the great job quickly, mm -hmm. and then how many of them were just slowly to meet your goal. Mm -hmm. And then that one will come up with the summary. What mm -hmm. are you going to do with those who became the last two? To, to make a, um to make that lesson mm -hmm. be successful how um how did your goals be mm -hmm. successful how, so how do you check to make sure it's successful um, so what did you do in the lesson this one, plan what you, have, what you did will help them to 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 understand mm -hmm. who um if your goal like has your been goal. successful mm -hmm. but how mm -hmm. many of them get it quickly mm -hmm. and how many of them were slow to get it? Uh, 
I think most of them got it. Are you asking me how many didn't understand? No, I was tell, I'm trying to tell you that um, by doing the, what we, um, having different skills which we have yeah. given them will help you yeah, 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 to yeah. understand because they will be working as individuals, right. independent. That one will help you to identify them, right. those who got it quickly yeah. and those who were slow in getting it. Yeah. And you and guys will know how to help these who were slow in getting it. Right. Them. And you guys know your students pretty well, so you know who would struggle with concepts and who might mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So you could always give like the slower writers or the kids who might struggle with it different sentences or that are a little partner. easier. Part or work it, you can pair them up with a partner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they can do it together. Yeah. Even though the rest of the class is doing it individually, that's a good way okay. to do, sometimes pair a high learner with a lower, mm -hmm. slower learner. Um, how did you understand in your lesson that your learning goal has been successful? Well, we have this resource and, um, from Opportunity Education, the teacher guide. So I'll let Melissa explain how you would use that during your lesson. So in the back of the teacher's guide here, there's an assessment checklist that goes with all of the lessons. Mm -hmm. So if you go here to lessons three through six, where it talks about grammar, mm -hmm. you'll see subjects, predicates, if they can diagram sentences, mm -hmm if they can identify different parts of speech and you can list the students names here mm -hmm. and then as you're walking around seeing them working mm -hmm. you can put checks or yes or no and then that will show you who didn't quite get the learning goal and you can go back and review with them mm -hmm. and it'll also show you who really gets the learning goal so you can take them on to the next lesson okay, mm -hmm. okay melissa i noticed that at the very beginning of the lesson you just told the pupils about the learning goal. Is it very important to do that? So the learning goal will tell them what they're going to learn and what their goal is by the end of the lesson. Mm -hmm. And then it's also important to add in why they're learning that mm -hmm. because it kind of uh, it makes the lesson meaningful for them. Mm -hmm. So why do I need to know this? Well, if there's a student that wants to go on to become a writer, mm -hmm. they're going to buy into this because they're going to know that they'll need it or if there's a student that has goals to go to the university, then now they know they're going to need this to be successful in the university, so now they're interested in the lesson. So it, it, it will make the people more interested. Yes, it makes the lesson more meaningful for them. Okay. Thank you. And this one will also help them to meet their, um, their, 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 their uh, to meet their future life goals. Yes. Because some of them will be, would like to become journalists, mm -hmm. some of them will become to become would like to become authors. So, if you know your students, what I do in my classroom, I know what jobs they're interested in. Mm -hmm. I'll tie that into the why. This one will also help them um, to be interested because the, um, some pupils in the class have different hobbies in their future mm -hmm. life. So, with this one, for example, those who'd like to be journalists. They'll be good writers, mm -hmm. and those who um, who will be authors of the novels will also be good writers with good and se um, good writing, and they making the sentences which have full, which are having meaning, um, the meaning, and uh, and they can be understood mm -hmm. by the people who are reading their works. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you pointed out uh, that. Learning English will help the people who want to be journalists, authors. It will help them in their further studies in college and in university. Is that all? Um, apart from that, I think English language is an international language. Yeah. And it can be applicable in different sectors. For example, if you come to tourism, um, English learners, those who are learning English, this um, will help them in the job of tourism. They can meet, through English, you can meet tourists from different nations. And then you can communicate since it is an international language. I also think students can get local jobs in hotels, which will also help with tourism. So it will help them communicate with people who are coming into Tanzania locally. So hotels and tourism, like you mentioned. Yeah, it's very bad nowadays you're having a lot of Kenyans here. Mm -hmm. So if they learn, I think they can take those jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I think there is also this job of pilots. Um, this is a worldwide, and since um, the person who wants to be a pilot must know English mm -hmm. because he has to fly to different nations. Mm -hmm. um, he cannot or she cannot use any other language apart from English as in an international language. This one will help him or her to be connected with different people with diff in different nations. Wow. Yeah. And, and I also think this, the, the English learning helps our pupils to build confidence because you find mm -hmm. that most times it's not that the Tanzanians we lack the language, we all lack the knowledge, but because of the language we find that we feel inferior to the others, members mm -hmm. from the other citizens, citizens of other countries when we go for an interview. We find mm -hmm. that we feel inferior and when we go there we, we lack that confidence to face them in the interview. At the end of the day we find they are taking the, the collar jobs while mm -hmm. we are left without jobs. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I can add your point also. That apart from that, since you have been coached well through English language, this one will connect you. Since you have the knowledge concerning the English language, and since you practiced it, you you can write it, you can um, you can speak it, and you can listen it. So that, that one will help you to to communicate, and that one will create confidence. Mm -hmm.